God bless you beloved and, and welcome to the program A Study in the Word This is Brother Alma from the Cape Town Tabernacle Church and I will be sharing with you the Word of God tonight so may the Lord just bless you and may He be with you is my prayer and thank you for allowing me and inviting me into your house into your car or wherever in the world you are and I just pray God's riches and abundant blessing to be upon you and just stay tuned and let the Lord speak to you tonight through His Word. So yes, beloved, we shall read tonight from the book of Matthew, the Gospel according to Matthew. Now we know, of course, that there is four Gospels given to us. The Gospel according to Matthew, the Gospel according to Mark, and the Gospel according to Luke, and then also the Gospel according to John. So it's four, four Gospels, but it's not four different Gospels that's contradicting one another. But it is the same Gospel. It is one Gospel, but it is written from different perspectives. And if you study the Gospel according to Matthew, you will see Jesus being presented as the King. If you study the Gospel according to Mark, you will see Jesus presented as the Servant. And if you study the Gospel according to John, you will see Jesus presented as God and if you see the gospel according to Luke you see Jesus presented as the man or the son of man so we have different angles or different perspectives from which Jesus Christ is being presented but it's all one gospel so it's not the one gospel contradicting the other gospel but it's still the one and same gospel speaking about Jesus Christ so before we go into our word study let us close our eyes and bow our heads for a word of prayer dear lord thank you for giving us this opportunity that we can gather around your word in your name you said what two or three are gathered in your name there you will be in their midst thank you lord that you are in my midst and also in the midst of the listeners and touch their hearts and lives is my prayer lord and bless them with wisdom knowledge and insight and most importantly, Lord, with the revelation of your word, we pray that in Jesus' holy name. Amen. And may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you. Thank you for those that are tuned in. So yes, beloved, I'm not able to make it live in the studio today due to working circumstances. But God is faithful and God is a provider. And he has made a way for me to even speak to you in this time. So we shall read in the book of Matthew chapter 26 and from verse 69 now Peter sat without in the palace and a damsel came unto him saying thou also was with Jesus of Galilee but he denied before them all saying I know not what thou sayest and when he was gone out into the porch another maid saw him and said unto them that was there this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth and again he denied with an oath I do not know the man and after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou art also one of them, for thy speech betrayeth bereath thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. So yes, beloved, we spoke on Sunday about the betrayal. The betrayal of Judas Iscariot, how did he betray the Lord Jesus Christ? And tonight we shall be speaking about not the betrayal, but the denial. So the denial of Simon Peter. Now we know that Simon Peter was one of the apostles of Jesus. He was one of the men which Jesus chose to follow him and then also to preach his word. So he was definitely a called one, a chosen one. And Peter was a man that Jesus really trusted with a lot. You'll see even in Matthew chapter 16 that Jesus said that unto you I shall give the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And Peter was really an important individual even in the sight of God. And Peter did great things in the name of God. But we see that closer to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, this is the same man that said that he is prepared to even die with Jesus. He is the same individual that actually denied Jesus. And he denied him by merely saying the words that I do not know him. And to deny can be really a dangerous, dangerous thing. Because Jesus speaks to us in the book of Matthew chapter 10 
in verse 33 and he says that whosoever shall confess me before men him shall I confess before my father and before the holy angels but whosoever shall deny me before men him shall the son of man also deny before the father and before the holy angels so that is how it is as Jesus said so if you confess him he will confess you but if you deny him he will also deny you and it is truly our words that will either justify us or it is our words that will condemn us yes that is how it is according to the holy scripture and we see that simon peter was a man that even though he was a great preacher a miracle worker and so forth but he came to the point where he denied jesus and jesus even said before the cock crow you will have denied me three times and we know that simon peter was scared he was living in fear because if he would acknowledge that he knows Jesus, then obviously there would be consequences. We know that Jesus was uh, caught and he was cast into prison. And afterwards he went to a trial, a hearing, and then after that he was crucified. That is according to the account the Bible gives us. But now with Simon Peter, we see that he did something similar. He did something uh, that was so horrible. A man that followed Jesus came to the point where he denied Jesus and he said that I don't even know this man and out of fear that he would also go in the same predicament as Jesus was in to be cast into prison to be beaten up to be killed and he had that fear and therefore he denied Jesus and so many people today that also profess to be Christians do the exact same thing they deny the Lord Jesus Christ and to deny him is the worst mistake that you could ever make as a Christian to deny him to say that you don't know him out of fear that you will lose friends out of fear that you will lose uh, whatever popularity fame and it is a bad thing to deny Jesus and we should never be ashamed of Jesus or of the gospel because the Bible says in Romans 1 verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because it is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. Praise the name of the Lord. So we should not be ashamed of Jesus. But we see in this case, Peter was ashamed and he denied the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is something that we should really avoid doing as they call ourselves Christians. And we can also see, beloved, that... Peter was a man that had the right confession. If you read Matthew chapter 16 from verse 19, the Bible makes it very plain that Jesus was asking his disciples, Who does the people say that I the Son of Man am? And they answered him and said, Some say that you are Jeremiah, Elijah, or one of the prophets. They even thought that Jesus was John the Baptist. But then Jesus asked them and said, But who do you say that I am? And then only Simon Peter answered him and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood is not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven has revealed this unto you. So we see that Peter had divine revelation, and because he had divine revelation, he could make the right confession. And it is so important that we should have the right confession. And our confession should be that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Our confession should be found in Jesus Christ. And we should not be ashamed of Him. And then the Bible also warns us in 1 John chapter 4 to not believe every spirit, but to try the spirits. And that every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, such a spirit is of God. But a spirit that says that Jesus Christ is not come into the flesh, such a spirit is not of God. That is just the fact of the matter. That is just the truth. Now, to say that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, we need to refer back to John chapter 1, where the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then it says in verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So to say that He came into the flesh is actually to say that He is divine. And that he is the one that actually came down from above to below and that he manifested himself in a human form so that is the truth of the matter 
to confess that he is divine that he is not just man but he's also God and to have this confession is the right confession and Peter had this confession and he was blessed and Jesus even said that upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it and Jesus even said thou art Peter and unto thee shall I give the keys of the kingdom of heaven and we see that Peter had authority because that is what keys does keys gives you authority and he had authority to open the windows of heaven but he also had authority to close again the windows of heaven and it is a truth that he had the right confession but now if we look further than that we see that even after having the right confession he came under the wrong inspiration and the moment he came under the wrong inspiration that was uh, the moment when Satan entered in when he came under the wrong inspiration and there are also many people today that profess or confess Jesus Christ but uh, they come under the wrong inspiration afterwards and that is something that we should really guard against do not come under the wrong inspiration do not come under the wrong influence but to stay with the revelation and we see that Peter had a great confession he confessed that Jesus is the Son of God and that is also what our confession should be like we should confess him we should not be ashamed of him Jesus says in the gospel of according to Mark that if you are ashamed of him that he will be ashamed of you so let us not be ashamed of Jesus Christ now if we if we study especially Matthew chapter 16 we see that Peter had the right confession people were saying all sorts of things about Christ they were saying some were saying that he is Beelzebub or he cast of devils out of Beelzebub some called him a child born in fornication others called him uh, a, a glutton and a, a wine drinker and all sorts of bad, bad names and criticisms and stigmas attached to him but when it came to Simon Peter he had the right confession and we should firstly make sure that we as Christians have the right confession and we should also take note that the devil can even make a confession and the devils also confessed and said that Jesus is the Son of God so it's not merely about repeating what is being said but it is about having the right revelation the right understanding about what is being said and so many people today just repeat what others are saying and people are making uh, faith confessions church confessions but the true confession should be a, conf a confession according to the word of God that is the type of confession that God is really longing for God is longing for us to have a true confession a biblical confession a confession that is based upon the word of God so yes that is the type of confession that he is looking for and when it comes to the uh, confession part it should always be lined up and compared to what is already written and what is already said because any confession that is contrary to what is being said or contrary to what is written such a confession is unbiblical and such a confession should be rejected and God does not recognize us